Good afternoon and welcome back to another Consume Comms IGTV for International Women's Week. Today we're going to be chatting with Marisha, um, who is a operations aficionado and um, non-exec at Consume Comms alongside many other roles that she has. Um, Marisha's going to give us some insights into her professional life and the the route her business has taken um, in a post-pandemic climate. So I'm just going to add Marisha now. She's going to pop up on second. Here she is. Yes, she is. Hello, Hi. friend. Hi. Hi. I just realised I am matching with my racking. That's how nice. Nice. <laughs> I want to wake up. Let's hashtag that going <laughs> forward. Um, so, Marisha, I have introduced your role as um, an operational whiz and um, a briefly mentioned your many roles but do you want to introduce yourself um, and what what your suite of businesses portfolio <laughs> is about? Yeah sure so um, I started in telecoms I think that's the best place to to go first so that is my my bread and butter if you like um, so I've been doing that for 15-16 years now and um, that's taken me into all sorts of other places um, from a, an operational perspective um, so I obviously help out at Consume um, from a non-exec side I um, help out with um, some gin. Um, so we have a gin company, a marmalade company, and also a, a D2C company too. Um, but they, whilst they all seem a little bit, you know, separate and a little bit weird, um, actually they are all connected, um, you know, in their own kind of way. Um, and obviously with you being part of Consume, we have, you have featured on previous chats we had the, the podcast and such together, but um, for International Women's Week, I particularly wanted to have this conversation with you because of, um, I feel like in this climate at the moment, there's a lot of redundancies, there's a lot of uncertainty, um, it's hard going for businesses, but your business has really changed in the last 18 months. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about that change and how you found opportunities um, mm -hmm. recently and going overseas and what that's been like? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, in terms of the, the telco world from where, where I'm from, if you like, um, and my skill set is actually, it was always... It was always very niche to start off with, um, but with the pandemic, that's got less and less, like it's become more and more niche to the point where, you know, I got to, you know, questioning whether um, it was something that, you know, is still needed, um, whether it, you know, I needed to to change and quite frankly, you know, what what to do next. And, you know, but the, the skill set that I have is, you know, is required in other areas. It's required in bigger companies, corporates and overseas. Um, and through connections, um, and through working with with other people in the industry that's kind of taken me into into other areas and I, I was you know we've spoken about you know working with the US um you know primarily um because well you know it's a bigger market and they have a, a huge you know tech space out of there um so that's that's kind of what took me down that route and I guess um you know fortune has that you know through connections of connections that's kind of you know where I've ended up um you know but it's it's not a case of you know it's kind of fell in my plate there's a lot of hard work to get there and a lot of connections and a lot of groundwork um to kind of open up those doors um but i think that that's you know been the biggest change um for me but i think it's it's one of those that was kind of led by well it was actually um, kind of um, sped up, really, I guess, with what happened with COVID, um, because, you know, the tech and the IT, uh, sorry, the telco and the IT world are, are completely converged now, which means that, you know, we need to do something different. Um, so we've got to embrace that change. And so I think like for, for us, probably jointly, um, one of the biggest challenges over the last few years is finding that new business. Mm -hmm. um, we were both very active networkers um out and about people peopling um so with covid that came that became a little bit more difficult so how how did you find these connections you know what advice would you give to people um seeking connections and obviously with networking now we were very regional at the time but we've now branched out to um 
for consume, we're looking nationally and beyond um, working with people in Europe, but you've gone that step further and you've gone international. Um, how do you seek those connections and manage them? So I think um, one of the, I guess one of the best slash worst things to come out of COVID is the, you know, online network space. You know, some people hate it, some people love it, but it has its place, right? You know, and I, I, there's, there's no... Um, there's no replacement for a face-to-face -face meeting, but quite frankly, it's not always that straightforward. Um, you know, so I think embracing that has been one of the big things um, and actually connecting with people that I, I'm, a, I'm a big advocate for saying yes to stuff, which, you know, I'm sure there's a joke there. But, um, you know, I think that's another thing that's kind of helps, you know, open up those doors because you never know where a conversation might lead mm. that, you know, there's there's a lot of resource online now um in i mean it's it's always been there but you know the covid thing just kind of taught us all to get online immediately we had no choice right whereas before we had to educate people with that and now it's it's you know you don't think twice about getting on a um, on a networking meeting and um, i think the the biggest thing is to um is to actually step out of the comfort zone with that, you know, because thinking that you, you know, get onto an international call, for example, mm. you will know, have the same challenges as you, they're wanting the same outputs as you, and they're just in a different place. Um, and okay, yeah, there's, you know, sometimes there are some differences, but, you know, you kind of work your way through. Um, but I think, you know, there's, yeah, I think that's one of the, the best ways is to, to get out there and actually to speak to people. Mm -hmm you have to you know step outside of the people that you already know yeah and, and how what 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 kind of advice would you give so if you go on an international call or on a networking call obviously everyone's those little faces and boxes um how do you navigate finding uh, a connection through that um because before obviously when you were face to face you would find a person you would chat to them you'd make a little bit of small talk etc but when you're a sea of tiny box faces how how do you kind of find that <laughs> <laughs> I think um do you know I think the, the biggest thing to do is is to first say I think you need to go with a, a bit of a plan you know you have to have a reason for being there rather than just rocking up and talking to people because otherwise you know it's you, you finish the call and then you're done I think the second thing is you you have to bring yourself to the call you have to have you know bring your personality and actually you know talk to people um you know uh, I think it's if you're in a face-to-face -face meeting someone will come and pick you up from the corner and kind of say hi and bring you into the conversation and I think you you have to do that yourself uh, while, whilst you're online um, and I think as well you know the, the biggest thing is is following up afterwards you know actually listen to people and what they're saying you know most of the times people are online or people are in networking just just hearing to be able to respond quicker rather than actually listening to what's being said and I think you know there's there's a huge amount of opportunity out there and once you actually start getting into to conversations with people it may not happen immediately on the call but there's no reason why you can't have a you know a 20 minute catch up afterwards um you know the reality is if you don't ask you don't get so I think you have to kind of you know put yourself out there and, and just you know if you see something that might turn into something else or turn into you know an opportunity not necessarily from a business perspective either it might be a great contact for you mm -hmm. anybody that could you know has, has done what you're doing and you just want to talk to them I think it's it's truly about building relationships um, you know, as, as well as you know finding new business yeah and I think we shouldn't be uh, scared to just drop people a message even, you know, there's, I think there was a lot of uh, like maybe hierarchy with startups and how we've been going and like being able to go across it internationally is more the fact that you have a skill set and um, just dropping people a quick note. Generally, people are friendly, they will reply. Or if you're on a networking event um, and you don't want to speak up, you can always find them and send them a note. There are other means. Um, but yes, I agree picking picking different groups that you aren't necessarily in all the time does help um and what other challenges been working internationally obviously the time is super fun uh the time difference is really fun but so fun like who even needs sleep we don't need sleep um time time and culture are obvious ones but um what are the challenges and how have you kind of navigated working uh, outside of the uk I think, um, you know, to be honest, you, you've mentioned it really, the time difference is the biggest one for me to, uh, at the moment, you know, because it goes from, you know, working with, um, you know, East Coast, West Coast states, um, but I've also been working with, um, you know, a team in Beijing as well. And, you know, so the time difference there between the two 
teens is is you know pretty massive but um you know i think the the other thing is that it's i don't i don't necessarily think it's just a challenge of working overseas i think it's a challenge of working remotely full stop yeah, maybe. Um, and I think that it's how do you, you know, become part of the team? How do you keep that communication open? Um, you know, and I think there's a, a huge amount of, you know, having to embrace the tools that we've got access to these days. You know, we, they were there to start off with, but again, we've had to, you know, just, you know, crack on with using stuff like this, like Teams, like, you know, Slack, you know, all the, all the you know, communication and collaboration tools that are out there. There are hundreds, right? Um, you know, so I think that, that those have, have kind of come into their own. Um, and I think that's the only way. And I, and I think you have to have, you know, kind of fixed touch points too, because it's very easy to, you know, for the weeks to while away, um, you know, so that just comes into, you know, standard planning, et cetera. But I think you really have to, you have to work at it because it's not just like you can, you know, speak to somebody sitting next to you to to kind of um, you know ask a question of or whatever. On the flip side of that, I think you have to be very mindful of people's time mm -hmm. uh, availability. Um, you know, there's there's the it's a, a danger to slip into always being available for everyone all of the time. Um, you know, and so I think there's you know you just have to put some boundaries around that too. Um, you know, and expect that from the other side. Yes, I am. Um, I think that's one of the biggest things we've learned uh, in nearly like seven years of running businesses is finally we've learned the value of boundaries um, and boundaries for success because we do need some downtime. Um, uh, and looking at the theme for International Women's Week is equity. So finding uh, how do we offer that space so that people so that we can have equality obviously we've come from interesting backgrounds of telco tech um, and those sort of spaces um what have the challenges been over the years um finding space and kind of trying to well seeing the changes in equality um in those industries and in your kind of career that's a big old question isn't it really i think <laughs> Uh, you know, we just, just put the world to rights in a 15 minute conversation. But I think, I think, you know, in, in all honesty, I think there's a huge amount still to do. I think there, there's, you know, we've made strides. I think there's a, there's a lot for, for women in tech, people of colour in tech, etc. Um, but I think there's, there's a huge amount to do, to be honest. Um, you know, and I think the only way, that, well, there's two ways to, to kind of really push that through. Firstly, there's a whole whole bunch of work to be done in terms of legislation and secondly what can we do as business leaders to be able to support that and I think there's you know it's creating those environments that we would want to be in ourselves yes. uh, and I, it's it's easy to say it, but actually it's quite difficult to do because we're knackered <laughs> you know there's uh you know how you've yeah. got to really kind of it's be mindful with doing that um, and I think as well, I think there's a huge amount to be said for mentorship and, you know, pe being visible, um, you know, to, you know, to, for other people to look towards that. Um, so I think you also have to be open to, to talking to people. And I guess that goes back into the networking side of things. You know, it's not necessarily about what's in it for me. You know, I be, might be able to help somebody else in that space too. Um, so I think, you know, the whole equity, equality, you know, yeah, it'd be great to say, you know, equal pay and, you know, all of those equal opportunities and all of those kind of things. And we know that's what we need to do. Quite frankly, there's no real excuse for it not to be there anymore. But, we, you know, it is. Um, so I think, you know, the challenge for me is that it, that it is 100 percent still there. Um, you know, and, and, and the conversations that I have, you have to shout louder to make your voice heard. You know, you have to kind of put your foot down to say, you know, this is a or you know you, I think you have to kind of put yourself out there and again that's easier said than done you know some are more confident than others um, and I, so I think you have to also align yourself with people that will support you both male and female yes. uh, quite frankly you know so I think there's yeah you, there's there's work to be done outside but there's an awful lot that we can do ourselves too yeah I think like the main thing is is awareness that's the biggest change I've seen in the, like, the last nearly 20 years of my career is awareness of this. And um, I think the danger for us is being siloed and taking too much on. Um, you know, we, we are present. We have to be, we have to occupy space to an extent, but also you don't want to burn yourself out. So I think um, you have to pick, 
pick the things you want to do and like make sure that you like I say I think the biggest things we try and create a work environment that we all want to be in um obviously our our brand of professionalism is very open and honest and welcoming um so hopefully you know we create we're creating working environments that just organically are everyone is allowed to be themselves and we we are open to have those conversations if if people need to have conversations i think that's that's something that didn't exist maybe before sure i think as well it's it's the the, the difference that i've seen is the embracing the femininity because yeah. you know, when i when i was growing up look at me my old self <laughs> It was like, you know, the women had to be men, you know, it was that kind of, you know, vibe, you know, you've got to walk around in a power suit and shout at people to be able to get anywhere. Um, you know, that just doesn't wash anymore either. You know, there's no expectation of that anymore. Um, you know, that's not to say that you can't be strong and, and you know, confident, etc. Um, and that may still work for a lot of people, right? But I think that's that's a change that I've seen is that, you know, we, we embrace, you know, as we are rather than trying to be something else, um, you know, because that's exhausting. Yeah, um, for sure. And working in tech, mm. what what challenges have you faced or what <laughs> challenges, what, what's hap what are your, I've said predictions, but I don't mean like what are you going to predict to AI, but like what do you kind of see for the future of your kind of your profession your career your business what a what do you kind of see ahead um from a, yeah, a professional from a, from a professional kind of point of view i think that i think the the biggest thing from for, and it's a personal thing i guess really but it's how what's happening in in my industry if you like it's just that it's everything is now converged you know whereas once you were able to sell a single phone or a single phone number you know it's it's not as straightforward as that now in terms of you know people expect a lot more you know they don't just want to go to one person for one thing they want everything in the same place which means that everything has converged so i think that that is going to happen more i think that you know we also have to embrace what tools are out there i think that it's, there's a danger sometimes of um getting getting a little bit kind of you know in your own bubble and not seeing else whatever else is going on um you know chat, uh, chat gbt is a massive you know part of that you know because it's here it's landed and everyone's like oh shit you know but actually there's ways to embrace that with what you're doing there's ways to make it work and i think that's what there's going to be a lot more of you know you, there's there's tools out there they're there um so how can we make them work for us um i think you know those those are the main things really um convergence um and embracing technology and what tips would you give so this this conversation is more for people that own a business but what tips would you give for someone's like actually um you're right i've been in my bubble i've been in like working in this area for this little community for so long how do i branch out how do i take the leap and find the next thing like you know whether it be going national or you know how what tips would you give for people to find um those spaces or what should they do where do they begin i think um the the biggest thing really is is to ask questions you know i think you have to ask people because like you said earlier you know most people are willing to help you know and it, or if if they can't help pass you on to somebody that can um so i think that's that's the biggest thing is to ask um you know the i am still an advocate for networking if you know even though i do a lot less of it at the moment you know i think that that uh, again um embrace places or groups that don't necessarily you know fit in with what you're used to mm -hmm. from a a women's perspective there's a huge amount out there like lean in um you know they have um circles all over the world you know just try them out um i think there's a, a sometimes a, a a concern that you you know you try something out and you have to commit and then you're going to be sold to um and okay yeah sometimes there's there's an element of that but you know i think you have to get into um you know just trying things out and seeing what works for you and you know like i say back to the beginning is when you do go to those meetings you know have a plan like, what are you there for if you want to find you know a connection in the states with you know xyz or if you want to work with a particular company that happens to be you know 200 miles from where you are like just ask the question you know it could be that somebody in the room you know has what you want or know somebody that has what you want 
um that's the only thing you can do and the other thing really is also to not get disheartened with it it doesn't happen overnight um you know so i think it's it's you know kind of seeing what's out there testing the waters and, and taking it from there really yeah i think that's definitely the case it's like don't be a serial networker go in with a plan um and when you know what you want or what you're trying to sell it makes it a lot easier to hone in on what uh events or people you need to have those conversations with um and like for me i've been doing it in two week blocks so that i feel like okay i tried that that worked that didn't work um because when you just book yourself onto all of the networking one you're exhausted and you can't follow up on the people that you do meet so yeah going in with a, a plan is definitely a, a better option than just going to all of the networking um yeah overwhelming like if you go to like a, an expo for example or an event you know it's kind of like you know there's no for me there's no point in just going for the sake of it because it's like you're just wandering around aimlessly and it's exactly the same if you're networking you know i think you, you really have to have an idea as to as to what and why and that really helps you to move on um you know and the, the original tools are all still there like linkedin and stuff like that i mean mm -hmm. yeah crap out there but there's also some gems in that too um you know and kind of find find someone and you know kind of poke them and also like just because they don't reply doesn't mean that they're not interested maybe they're busy you know so uh, of course I have to bear that in mind too yes <laughs> um and I think finally like the the best thing is when you are kind of looking at what you want to do and, it, and it's a bit overwhelming because you've got a big business what we like to do is dump everything post-it style I like to have digital post-its now because it's easy to organize Marisha's still old school paper post-it oh, yeah. um, but just dump everything onto one and then from there you can navigate what what you need to do what groups into stuff and it makes it a lot easier and then you can work out who you need to contact where you need to network to make those things happen mm -hmm. um and also that does feed into the equity and equality thing because you are out there in different spaces speaking to different people um you will find that you will find your people that will support you and you know, you'll pass on those referrals of other people that you can help as well along the way. So it becomes a self, self-supporting, what's one, it's a circle, the circle that helps itself. I think as well, like, um, you know, for the, you know, anyone younger that's looking, you know, that's, that's out there is, you know, maybe thinking, well, what do I have to offer, for example? You know, there's, there's, you know, the reality is a huge amount, you know, because, there's just striking up a conversation can you know trigger all sorts of things you know so I don't think it's necessarily about like, how long you've been in business or how long you've been in work or you know what any of those kind of things I think you really have to go in with an open mind um, what you can bring to the conversation and and it's always twofold you know someone can always learn something from you um you know and vice versa um so I think you know yeah just just go in with it and and see what happens what's the worst that could happen right I'm sure there's a Dr Pepper commercial there. <laughs> and you can end up with like 15 businesses. Uh, <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, perspective. You're also, and if you, sometimes you go to network and you don't get any business, but you get a perspective and you meet someone that is useful. Um, but yes, try and try and mix uh, online and in person. Um, I have, I'm only allowing myself to go to one in-person networking a week now and doing a bit of online because otherwise I just run around and I don't have time to do my work and you get exhausted. So I think, yeah, managing, especially if you're managing international and UK affairs, you have to have boundaries and you have to have some downtime. And we've now realized that we need to have some, some days off. Uh, I think the other thing as well, my, my, uh, my biggest tip actually um, is to embrace your suppliers and work with your suppliers like you know it's not for me it's never just a, a you know supplier customer type of relationship and you asked earlier about where you know my links come from and, and some of the times it comes through those um you know because you know there's all sorts of supplies for all sorts of things right we know that um but there there may be something that doesn't quite fit in with what they're doing that they may be able to you know connect you with or they might be able to you know pass some business your way because again it doesn't fit in with their portfolio there's a huge amount of, of that 
Um, you know, so, you know, some of my biggest clients and some of my biggest connections have actually come through my old connections, you know, for things that I thought were maybe dead or, you know, people that used to know me from, you know, six or seven years ago come back and say, oh, do you still know this or can you still help me with that? Um, you know, so I think that's that's the other thing, um, you know, use everybody around you, um, you know, clients and suppliers, um, because you never know where that may, you know, that new connection might come from. Yeah, and not everybody does everything. Like I, I found a referrals through um, branding clients, branding agencies. I don't offer uh, graphic design and branding, so uh, they don't offer like copywriting and marketing. So you can always find those partnerships are really useful, and you don't know where they'll lead. Exactly. Perfect. Well, thank you for that, Marisha. Um, we'll sign off now. Um, thank you for sharing your international. Your, your switch over hopefully i will compare and contrast this to our previous conversations and people that follow us will probably think what has been going on for the last three years <laughs> that running an international global empire um from barnsley yeah well you know we work hard it's as simple as yeah, that's the way it goes with covid you know it's what you what you make of it but definitely i think that the key takeaway is to um try and find move outside of your circle every now and again outside of your comfort zone um being a bit more risk taker and going somewhere um does make a big difference because you don't want to be just in a space of people offering the same service as yourself you won't learn you won't find new contacts so i think that's that's a good key piece of information okay well thank you so much for today thank you bye, bye.